Hi friends, in Planet Earth dating it's Sunday, December 1st, 2019. In both the Lynn Life and the Jamie Body Mind, <coughs> the authorized souls remain only child souls from the deeper denser dimensions. <coughs> and all other souls from all other dimensions as long as the souls are already living by the many rules already given to the search for truth community by wiser minds above all of us and we have found another short list of rules that were not previously committed to paper and we will be covering those at some future date because we don't have the we haven't worked through them at the level of detail and precision that's required before we put it in front of a camera. That's true. We do have the sense that at least some quality souls are able to push their way in the door along with all the other low class souls that trample through here. That's true. During sleep time and meditation time and somebody's asking uh, in a kind of a grouchy tone how I uh, what do you base that on that they're low vibration and it's itchiness this is That's actually true. a teaching of 30 years in the physical body itchiness in the physical body is a symptom of lower vibration presences in the early days when we were learning when this collective was learning a lot about esoteric phenomena it was described as dark entities. That's right. Dark entities create itchiness, and it was always that way. And in our 20 plus years of energy healing practice, it's always been that itchiness That's true. in a client or in ourselves in this host life. It's always low vibration presences. And for the past 10 days, there are low vibration presences that come in during the times that are traditionally reserved for guardian angel contact. That's true. Such as sleep times, meditation times. And and that's a problem. But about 12 hours ago, at least, the energy shifted a little bit. And at least there's some high-quality souls coming in along with the lower vibration souls That's right. that are still coming in because the itchiness is still there and it's there at the portal, a place of entry of souls. But in addition, we have somebody who's really interested in trying to figure out how to inspire a divine miracle to stop the destruction for planet Earth. And that is our big assignment and so to have souls that are actually focusing on the big assignment is a really good sign. That's true. These souls have a question about reestablishing upward flow on a mass scale. This assignment to create updraft so that the intuitive channels, the energy structures through which intuition comes the intuitive channels blow upward on a mass scale as used to occur. That's right. And then presences can hear their guardian angels and also for the guardian angels to have updraft through their dimension so that their channels also blow upward so That's that they right. can hear instructions from above them and so that their supervisor's dimensions also have upward flow through them so that their channels blow upward exactly. and so everybody can be listening up. Exactly. And then hearing the voices of God by any name and then hopefully asking God, what now? What do you want me to do, God? however somebody relates to the divine and we're not telling you how to relate to the divine but to ask the godly presences the way you connect with divinity what is it you want me to do what am I supposed to be doing with my life and right now at this era of my life what now and then to try and figure out what it is that God is actually telling us to do That's right. and then to, to do it to the best of our abilities what they're saying to do way the way in which they say to do it when they say to do it as if we intend to excel that's right so there's some soul here who's actually trying to do that and who actually cares and if I had to place a guess I would say it's probably Saul yeah that's true and Saul is really interested in what has worked on other planets with this level of destruction that's already occurred 
to reestablish upward flow on a mass scale. That's true. And they were having that collective do some research yesterday into That's right. destruction rates of rainforest. That's right. And what was the global rainforest destruction rate per minute? Uh, the global rainforest destruction rate was 30 football fields per minute. Three zero football fields per minute. I think as reported by the BBC. Which kind of makes sense when we fit it in with other sources of information that say three football fields of Amazonian rainforest are destroyed every minute. That's true. And so around the globe, 30 football fields a minute are destroyed. That's a lot of trees falling down, a lot of big trees falling down. That's true. And if we think about how trees work, they suck water and nutrients in through the roots. That's true. And then it's an upward flow through their trunks, taking the water and nutrients all the way to the crown. And they literally exhale out their leaves. They, they breathe through their leaves. That's true. And lungs of the planet is a term that's been used for forests and particularly rainforests. That's true. And we could also consider that they are creating the upward flow for the planet that forests are possibly what has been historically creating the upward flow and that what maybe has occurred to cause the upward flow to break down and shut down is that we've passed some tipping point and there's no longer enough forested land. That's right. And it could be because humans have uh, impacted or are occupying 70, 70 percent of the uh, non-ice covered land mass. That's right. So that's, that's every place that trees <laughs> would be growing. Yep, that's true. <sighs> And if we've murdered that many trees, then maybe that's what's happened to the upward flow. And so now we circle around, given the reality that we're at this level of destruction and that trees are still being knocked down all the time at the rate of 30 football fields a minute only in the rainforest. That's not exactly. counting temperate or nope. boreal forests. Exactly. Only the rainforest. So who knows what it is? 40, uh, 50 football fields I don't know more than 30 because if somebody asks how do you know that because because we live in temperate zone and uh, trees are being knocked down here super fast oh yeah that's true and we know that they're being knocked down in the boreal forests up north also that's true uh, what now to reestablish upward flow on a mass scale what has worked on other planets with this level of destruction to reestablish upward flow on a mass scale? Are there any planets with this level of destruction the way it is right now, today, that have successfully reestablished upward flow on a mass scale? And how did they do it? And somebody showing planting trees. Uh, which is obviously the way to go. Um, how do we do that on a mass scale? We've really got to mobilize. Friends, I don't know if you guys who are watching this in whatever dimension in which you're watching it can tell that there's not a lot of help coming from above right now because maybe because the interdimensional communications are so dicey because there's no upward flow. It's very possible that we're on a carousel of difficulty. That's true. There's no upward flow, therefore communication is difficult, therefore we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing to solve the lack of upward flow, and therefore the destruction continues. And we're really actually really not giving up on this assignment of inspiring a divine miracle to stop the destruction of planet earth or die trying and that's the dying true. trying takes the pressure off because we can that's always true. try until we die that's and true and so can you what now what now what now to reestablish upward flow on a mass scale what has worked on other planets with this level of destruction 
to reestablish upward flow on a mass scale. It's really got to become super uncool to be murdering trees. That's and true. to have it be revealed as the insanely, ridiculously foolish move that it actually is. That's true. When you kill a tree, the roots die, which means that erosion in that area picks up, which puts pressure on the trees around it, so then they fall over and die. And y you might not think that you've done much by killing a tree, but soon the hill is eroded. That's true. And then there's no arable soil, and there's no place to grow food, and people get very grouchy when there's no food. We get grouchy when yeah, there's I no do. food. And that's when wars start. Wars start when there's no food and people get grouchy. That's right. Somebody sent us a link. One of the YouTube viewers sent us a link to a video talking about a very well-funded um, think tank or foundation. That's right. Who maybe a hundred years ago was discussing what was the most effective way to change human behavior. And they spoke about it at length according to this YouTube video. That's right. The think tank members or the board foundation board members spoke at length, discussed at length what might be more effective in changing human behavior and they decided that war was the most effective way to change human behavior. This was in the early 1900s. That's right. And what that sounds like to us is a group of men coming to that conclusion because That's we true. seriously doubt that women would arrive at that same conclusion. That just sounds like men. Yeah, it does. Uh, it sounds like boys, actually. Yeah, it does. But, you know, presumably given that it was a foundation board, it would be men. That's true. And let's not, I, I don't think uh, it's surprising that a hundred years ago a foundation board room would be filled only with men. No, not surprising. Not surprising. Even today, most boardrooms are filled with men. That's true. Predominantly men. We do know that the angels have very consistently said that war is never the answer. War is never the answer. And that has been so consistently their message whenever the topic of war comes up. That's right. That we don't think that <laughs> that's what Divine Presences had in mind with how to change human behavior. No, that's true. For him is the message. Why do you ask? And what has worked on other planets with this level of destruction to reestablish upward flow on a mass scale? And we don't think war is the answer. So maybe somebody up there was saying, oh, good, well, let's just start another big war and they'll kill each other off and somehow good will prevail. But th we think that that uh, mechanism has been tried very thoroughly this last hundred years. That's true. Maybe we can give it up. We don't think it actually works. That's right. And the angels say it doesn't work. They say war isn't ever the answer. Isn't ever the answer. War is not ever the answer. There is never a time in which the answer is war. There's always another way, a better way, to resolve the situation, whatever the situation is. For whom is the message? And why do you ask? 